Ćao ljudi, ja sam Robert Zacešin, a u videu koji upravo sada gledate provjet ću vas ulicama grada Lahorea i pokazati vam zašto je meni lično u jedno od najboljih gradova i najnevjerovatnijih koje sam ikada vidio. Lahore je drugi poličini grad u Pakistanu, te jedan od 50 najnaseljenijih gradov na čitavom svijetu, u kojem danas živi nešto više od 13 miliona ljudi. Ovo je gastronomska, ali i kulturna prečnosta Pakistana, te grad sa velikim brojem objekata od istorijskog značaja. Hajde da vidimo šta se može da se vidi i radi ovdje. Ako bismo trebali da opišemo Lahore u samo nekoliko riječi, bio bi to gastronomski i kulturni biser Pakistana, jer ovdje ima toliko toga da se vidi i radi. Ovo je už to grad mladih i univerzitetski grad, sa čak 29 fakulteta i hiljadama studenta iz čitave zemlje koji dolaze ovdje da studiraju. Nekada je bio i filmski grad i prvo mjesto u čitavom Pakistanu u kojem su se nakon nezavisnosti od Velike Britanje 1947. godine mogli gledati filmovi, ali meni lično Najfascinantnija stvar ovog mjesta je njegova šarolikost i bogata istorija. Iako su službeni jezici Punjabi i Urdu, u gradu se govori čak 16 različitih dijalekata Punjabi jezika, svaki poseban na svoj način. Gotovo svaka ulica koju zađete opit će vas svojim bojama i mirisima, a svako mjesto koje posjetite ispričat će vam neku novu i sasvim drugačiju priču. kao najveća atrakcija grada. Izvaja se ova prelijepa Batshah i džamaj koju vidite iza mene, koja je mnogo me pošteno čudni Taj Mahal koji se nalazi u Sursinoj Indiji. Izgradio je mugalanski car Auranzeb, a dugo nakon svoje gradnje bila je najveća džamija na čitavom svijetu. Njeno ime u prevodu znači Carska džamija, a ova nestvar UNESCO-va građevina sa osam minareta ima kapacitet da primi čak 100.000 vjernika. Nakon što je izgradnja džamije završena 1673. godine, dugo vremena bila je poznata po svojoj veličini, s obzirom na to da je bila vidljiva s udaljenosti od gotovo 16 km, te da je predstavljala simbol moći Mogulskog carstva. Ali ta njena veličina donijela i određeno prokletstvo, te nakon što je ovaj region zahvatio građanski rat i kada su Siki preuzeli vlast, Batshah i Džamija započinje svoju novu istoriju. Na prijelazu vijeka, Siki preuzimaju potpunu kontrolu nad Lahorem i počinju koristiti Džamiju kao staju za konje i druge vojne jedinice. 50 godina kasnije, tokom građanskog rata, na 170 metara visoki minaret, postavljeni su pištolji kako bi pomogli u odbrani protiv grupe koja se slonila u obližnju tvrđavu Lahore. Za vrijeme perioda britanske vladavine, Čamija se dalje koristila za vojno skladište i bila je u prilično lošem stanju. Ali nakon što Pakistan postaje nezavisna islamska država, Čamija je vraćena njena prvobitna svrha i samo onaj sjaj kakav i zaslužuje, pa je danas njen izgled identičan onom kako je izgledala u 17. vijeku.
neposrednoj blizini džamije nalazi se i trđava Lahore, još jedan od simbola grada. Napravljena, oštećena, uništena i na kraju opet izrađena, trđava nosi istoriju bogatu više od pet vijekova. Uslijed brojnih ratova i dešavanja, njen izgled tokom godina se konstantno mijenjao, te se na njoj danas mogu vidjeti utjecaj mnogih naroda i kultura. Njena površina je ogromna, te će vam za potpuni obilazak trebati i nekoliko sati, tokom koje ćete imati priliku obići mnoga zanimljiva mjesta koja se nalaze u sklop palate, te vjerovatno napraviti neke od najboljih fotki na ovom putovanju. Naprosto sam odušeljen arhitekturom i istorijom ovog grada. Na trenutak imate divlje pijace, bazare, neobične markete, mirise, a onda imate ovaj smiraj koji vidite ovdje. Ne znam da li vama, ali meni ovaj grad zaista nudi mnogo, mnogo toga, te ne mogu da se odlučim koji njegov dio mi je bolji. Naš obilazak Lahorea nastavljamo posjetom Vazir Khan džami, smještenoj unutar staroga grada. Ova džamija smatra se za jednu od najljepše dekorisanih džamija čitavog grada sa prelijepim primjerima mozaike pločica koji potiču još iz mugalskog perioda. Džamiju dodatno ukrašavaju čudesni kaligrafički stihovi iz svijetog Kurana kao i različiti cvjetni motivi koji se pojavljuju u simetričnim oblicima. Upravo ta impresivna mješavina kaligrafije, geometrijskih oblika i cvjetnih ukrasa je ono što čini Vazir Khan džamiju tako grandioznom i nevjerovatnom. U blizini se nalazi Delhi kapija, jedna od šest kapija sačuvanih u Lahoreu i veoma značajan istorijski objekat grada. Mada, ako ste ljubitelji istorije, svakako je preporuka da posjetite Lahore muzej, sagrađen za vrijeme vladavine Britanaca u prelijepoj crvenoj cigli koja je bila veoma popularna u to doba. U muzeju se nalazi veliki broj artefekata iz praistorije kao i ogroman broj predmeta pronađenih na teritoriji današnje Pakistana. I da, Postoji jedna zanimljivost vezana za ovo mjesto. Jedan od kustosa muzeja bio je John Lockwood Kipling, otac čuvenog rudjarda Kiplinga pisca knjige o džungli, za kojeg se vjeruje da je sam svoje vremeno posjećivao ovaj muzej. Kada govorimo o tome šta se sve može vidjeti u gradu, ne smijemo zaboraviti ni Džahangir grobnicu, prelijepi mauzolej 17. vijeka u kojem počiva čuveni mugalski car Džahangir. Osim svoje ljepote, grobnica zuzima posebno mjesto životu stanovnika Pakistana jer predstavlja jedinu mugalsku grobnicu koja se nalazi u današnjoj zemlji, a njena slika nalazi se čak i na novčanici od hiljadu pakistanskih rupija. Mogli bismo još danima da obilazimo Lahore i sve njegove znamenitosti, jer ovaj grad zaista nudi toliko toga svakom putniku koji ga posjeti. Ali ako se sjećate početka ovog videa, gdje sam vam rekao da je ovo gastronomska prestunca zemlje, mislim da bi bilo u redu prije nego završimo ovo putovanje ovim preljetnim gradom da ispričamo nešto i o lokalnoj hrani. Ili barem da pojedemo nešto. Možda neko drugi može da priča ovaj put. Uh, 
I, I know you expected Robbie to tell you about the food, but he's too busy eating. So I will I will do that job for him. So basically, we are sitting in a restaurant that is you know uh, built with a Pakhtuni theme, Pakhtun theme. So the Pakhtun culture is actually they you they, you know they they sit in they sit on the ground and you know they eat very meaty they eat very meaty you know kind of foods. The vegetables are hard to find in their in their foods. So the Anna Anna might have a problem. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, they have visited, you know, Gawal Mandi, which is very famous for our street food. They might have encountered uh, Phajja, Phajja ke pai. The, the pies are actually, you know, the feeds are cow and they are cooked with a lot of condiments in them. And they are very, they are very, really very tasty. And then uh, we have uh, a typical Punjabi dish that is called Karahi. Karahi basically the chicken and it is, you know, cooked with a lot of masalas and it, it has a lot of gravies and we eat it with a roti or a, or you know with the naan and uh, then then there are sweets for sweets there are plenty of options but i like the rasgullas uh, they will be here in a moment okay so there is a rasgulla there is burfi there is gulab jamun there is jalebi maybe we can try that afterwards you should must you must try jalebis jalebis are very you know very From typical pakistani dish you eat, like vegetables ever no, the vegetables are pretty rare in our food. The vegetables, you know, uh, the vegetable, you know, we don't eat that a lot. Especially thus, especially thus you know, Punjabis and uh, Pakhtun, uh, the Pashto people. The Pashto people are, you know, uh, up in the ladder when it comes to eating meat. The, the, the main part of their diet is, you know, lamb, lamb, beef, mutton. This is all they eat. This is all that they eat. But why do you make the food so spicy for us? <laughs> you know, if you come to Pakistan, you should experience. You should experience what we eat. You know, we used to, uh, we want to irritate these guys. So that's why we put a lot of spice in it. You know, so they get, you know, they look all, they look all cute when they are, when they are red. So that's why I put a lot of spice in it. So they, when they eat, they all become red. <laughs> you know, it is, it becomes a treat for our eyes. But if you don't eat spicy food, like, do you think that there is no like spices in the food? Like, do you? Can you eat food that's not spicy? I? No. The, the, I, I, I probably cannot eat the food while spice. The spice? The spice are, you know, the essence of our food here. Without spice, it is nothing. You know, we, I, have, I have tried, actually, I have tried the food without uh, spices, but <laughs> it, wasn't really, it wasn't really tasty for me. <laughs> and uh, I have also tried some, you know, Western dishes. But you know, they don't, they don't put a lot of spice in it, you know. What you guys eat in spice, as I told you before, I've eaten in dessert. <laughs> so, this is the case. And about the fruits and vegetables, what can you find in Pakistan? You know, the, you can find pretty much every fruit and vegetable from here. You know, the Pakistan is known for agriculture. The, you know, our, our soil is very fertile. So you would find pretty much everything. You would find, you know, sugar cane, you would find, you would find uh, tomatoes. You would find onions, you would find carrots, you can find cabbage, you would find... Uh, when it comes to fruits, the area you are going to, Sawat, it is very famous for its apples, its peaches, and uh, you know, it is also famous for their dry fruits. You know, the, the western part of the Pakistan is famous for their dry fruits. And there is a thing called Chilghoza. Chilghoza, I don't know what, they, what you guys call it, call it in English. But chilgoza is like a small seed type dry fruit. It is really very tasty and it is quite expensive. You know, pretty much you would find everything. You want strawberry, you would find it. You want mangoes, you would find it. The, the Punjab is actually very famous for uh, mangoes. The mangoes and uh, the area where I, where I belonged is called Sargoda. And the Sargoda has world's, not just Pakistan, world's most famous and world's, uh, it is often regarded as one world's top uh, citrus, uh, citrus field, you know. The a lot of our a lot of our citrus, you know, oranges, uh, lemons, it goes it, it is exported to the Western countries. So it is pretty famous for that. And if you could live from only one food all your life, what would you eat? Uh, if I could live, I would probably live on a mutton gadahi. <laughs> yeah, but I won't be live I won't be live long enough because you know it is all fatty and uh, the chances of coronary heart disease gets pretty much increased if I eat keeping if I keep eating those the, those you know meaty and fatty food you know uh, let me tell you the the dumba kadai i told you about you know they they uh, do, don't add water or any oil in it 
they cook it in they cook that food in the fat of the animal you know instead of adding oil or uh, any other you know synthetic they just put natural stuff in it and they allow it to cook on coal you know, the usual mutton kadai is gets cooked in an uh, half an hour but the, the the that kadai takes almost 2 hours and you know when they open the lid just the you know smells makes it worth it it is that tasty and when we go when we go to the when we go and order that mutton kadai uh, we specially order uh, order the fat the animal fat to be in that because it's get very tasty you know the moment you you know uh, put in your mouth it starts melting and it is you know a very very you know uh, delicious experience if you had a day or day or one here i would have take, taken you guys to that to that place it is called truck adda and they make you know very they are very famous for their dumba kadais and if you would meet the most prettiest girl in the world okay but she's a vegetarian can you do with her no <laughs> i can't make it work with her if she is vegetarian <laughs> that's a big no She is the smartest, the prettiest girl, but if she doesn't eat meat. Yeah, if she is the smartest, then you know we can think about it. But if she is, if she is just pretty and she is vegetarian, no, that won't make it but work for me. Smarter, she can maybe convince her. To eat. Yeah, if she is smarter, we can. You know, uh, if someone is vegetarian, they had to take the protein, and the main source of protein is the animal. So you know, I if she is smart, maybe I I can convince her that you have to eat the meat in order to survive. For my wedding, they are all invited and they have to come. They they had to visit Skardu, but they didn't. But when they will come for my wedding, uh, before the wedding, we might actually take a trip to Skardu. So no, the Pakistan, you know, is a really beautiful country. The people are beautiful. The people are kind. The people are gener generous. They show a lot of hospitality hospitality towards the foreigner. So I invite all of you guys to come here in Pakistan and experience, you know, our our amazing food, our spicy food, and experience the nature up up, on, up in the north. So you know, we would have we would love to have you guys around. and maybe maybe like this guy we might even make friends with you I zaista ne znam niti polje završio u naše putovanje po Pakistanu, nego na ovom nevjerovatnom mjestu i ovim sjajnim pogledom. 12 dana, sjajni ljudi, sjajne priče, nevjerovatne klope, predobrih avantura i sve šta je nekako ovdje. Mana Mila mi kaže da će je pogled biti još bolji noć, pa šta znam? Ovo izgleda već mnogo bolje. Ljudi, hvala što ste gledali ovaj video. Nadam se da ste uživali. Zapratite nas na našim društvenim mrežama. A mi se vidimo u nekoj sljedećih rio putovanja.